Hello everyone and welcome to the VI lesson from Penn Tester University. So today we're going to discuss what VI actually is. And the reason why we're doing this is I probably get about 20 or so emails a week uh, from students and users asking me how to use VI. And again, that's probably because you guys see me use it a lot in our videos. And uh, I thought it was about time that we make a actual lesson on how to use VI. So now what is VI? VI is short for Visual Instrument. And it's a simple but powerful command line or terminal based text editor. Now the pros to this is it's uh, allows for speed of editing text files because let's face it most of our work is done from a terminal and while we're in terminal uh, it's easier to use VI to edit a configuration file or create a new text file or something to that effect uh, on the other side of it if you wanted to use a GUI method you would have to open up your uh, file manager then navigate out to where the file configuration file text file whatever is then you'd have to open it in say something like leafpad or whatever GUI uh, text editor you're using and then you'd have to make your changes and then save it and then get out of everything else so you can see that it takes a lot more time to actually do that uh, as opposed to using VI so for us, VI is basically the equivalent to Notepad in Windows. It's a very simple text editor that you can make changes to a file quickly and save them. So let's get started with showing you how to use VI. And in this lesson, we're going to go through uh, your basic write and quit functions. We're going to show you how to create an actual document. And we're going to show you how to navigate around the document. And then I'm going to show you how to set some features, turn them on and off. Uh, I'm going to show you how to find text, do a search inside of that. Um, then we're going to show you how to do the search and then replace uh, feature. And then I'm also going to show you how to delete certain characters or certain lines. So let's get started here. So let's just say we wanted to go ahead and create a new document called test.txt. So simply it would be vi, oops, make sure I'm in the terminal here, vi test dot text now you don't have to name a file extension at the end here you can just make a test uh, I put the file extensions because I want to quickly at a quick glance know it's a text document it's a configuration file it's a bash script it's whatever so just go ahead and hit enter then and now that brings us into a document it's a new file and all of your commands and what you're currently doing here is shown at the bottom left of your terminal screen so you can see test.txt it's a new file but we haven't actually done anything to this right now it's in memory it's not an actual file we've created it's not written to disk yet so let's talk about inserting some text um, simply it is the I key and that's it no colon no nothing just I and you can see that towards the bottom left here change to insert so now we're in insert mode this is your command mode on the bottom left and let's just put in some text here so this whoops is a test document and if you hit enter you can go on down and then put in some more text so text test text test text now uh, let's say we want to save our changes to this file and very simply you have to anytime you're in a mode a command mode you have to hit escape to get out of that command mode it's very important otherwise it, you're just gonna keep adding characters here so hit the escape key and you can see that the bottom left changed to nothing and you can see that our cursor went back one now to write your changes to disk and actually create the file for this matter or if you were in an existing file to save the changes to this file you type in colon w and hit enter lowercase w always so now you can see it says test.txt new file um, and all the good stuff down here so let's get uh, let's want to go ahead and quit our file so it's again colon q lowercase q for quit we're done editing now let's say we're doing some tasks and we want to go back in and make some changes to this file. So again, simply it's vi test.txt and hit enter. And now we're back into this file. So I'm going to show you some navigation here. So simply uh, to move up and down, it's you can use your arrow keys here. And down would be the down arrow key, of course. And of course, up would be the up arrow key. Uh, left and right, left and right arrow keys here. So uh, let's go ahead and show some appending. So if you wanted to append some text um, to a line or to the document itself, um, 
there's two ways of doing it. Again, you can hit the I for insert, and I'll show you how to do that here. So we arrow all the way down to the end because we want to insert it after the line or after the sentence. This is a test document. And you can type in insert, and now you can do spaces, and you can type in um, test append, and that's that. Now, if you want to backspace, of course, if you spelled something wrong, which I do sometimes, uh, just go ahead and hit the backspace key, and you can certainly go ahead and do that while you're in insert mode. So again, we hit escape to get out of that, and we can write our changes to disk. And we're not going to go ahead and quit the document this time. This time, I want to say, you know, I meant to say test append test again. And I really need to append to this line. So again, instead of hitting insert or I for insert, you can do A for append. And it will actually bring you into a cert insert mode. It's virtually the same thing, but it automatically, you know, makes the space at the end for you here. So I just want to add in test and then again hit escape to get out of insert mode. Now, let's say I wanted to delete one character here. Let's say I meant to say text and not test. So I would bring my cursor in front of the letter that I wanted to change. Whoops. Let me go back up here. So if I want to change the S to an X, I would bring my cursor with the arrow keys in front of or to the left of the character that I want to change. You type the letter R and then the letter you want to replace it with X. So you can see now that uh, that was a quick character replacement. So now it reads text. So of course, just by habit, I always hit the escape button after I do any kind of command or any kind of edit just because I don't want to like accidentally mess up and start typing in characters. So uh, this is helpful when you're writing code or changing configuration files because you can really get yourself in some mess there if uh, that was the case. So it's a good habit to always hit escape even a couple of times. So now let's say if we wanted to delete an entire line of text, let's say we wanted to get rid of the sentence that says uh, test test text. So we would arrow down there to that and hit the D key twice. And that deletes the whole entire line. Now that can be kind of dangerous. Um, because you want to make sure that you're deleting the right line. So you have to be, your cursor has to be on that line that you're looking to delete. And for instance, if we were looking to delete some spaces here, uh, you notice that we have some lines. Uh, if we arrow it up there, we got two blank lines. So let's say we want to take those out. Again, double D once, double D twice, and now we just have the one line at the very top. So let me go ahead and append to this. I'm going to make some new lines here, and I'm going to type in just some random stuff here. Test, text, um, text, test, and then read this. And then I'm going to create a new line without a space, and I'm going to put uh, this needs to be read. And in a period, and hit my escape key. So let's say that we want to find out um, if you're editing code and or configuration files, it's helpful to know if you're getting like an error, it says, you know, uh, line 22, for instance, is, you know, has a syntax error or something to that effect. It's very simple to turn on the line numbers here, uh, much the same as if you used other text editors like Notepad++ that has that functionality built into it automatically. Simply, you type in the colon, remember the command option that tells VI that we're looking to enter in a command, and type in set number with a space between set and number, and hit enter. And now you can see that you have numbers appeared in yellow to the left of our lines. And again, just hit escape. I'm sorry, hit uh, colon, and enter. Now you have your lines here. So let's say that we wanted to actually go to a specific number and that would be G uh, actually it's the number first so let's say we want to go to line 6 so it would be 6 capital G and that brings you your cursor right over to line 6 uh, vice versa if we wanted to go to line 2 or to line 3 for instance we would just do 3 and then capital G and that brings us right over to line 3 now that said, uh, let's say that we wanted to find text in a document. And what we're going to look for, let's see here in this document, is the only unique word in here. Um, really, I think, is the word to. 
So simply if you typed in ever the forward slash and then the text to find uh, no spaces, uh, in this case, we're going to type in two, you can see that it jumps right down to the word two and highlights it for you. So let's say, for instance, we want to find multiple instances of one word inside the entire document. Uh, now, of course, as we know, configuration files and text files often have the same word multiple times throughout the document. And when you're looking for specific things in a large document, this will help you. So very simply, let's get out of here. And always you can type escape to get out of any kind of command. And let's go all the way back up to the top here. And I want to find every instance of the word text since that's in here multiple times. So simply forward slash text, oops, text. And you can see it's highlighted the very first instance of text. Hit enter. Now type the N key and you can see it brings you to every instance of the word text in the entire document. So that's just kind of like the search option inside of Notepad or any kind of visual text editor. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, finding and replacing a string uh, or a word. So let me go ahead and let's get out of here. Okay. So let's say we wanted to replace the word text in this very first line, line number one, with the word apple. Uh, simply what we would do here is we would make sure we're on that line with the cursor and helpful to be at the beginning of the line and you type in colon s for search forward slash the word that you're looking to replace in our case text and forward slash again and the word that you're looking to replace it with and in our case that would be apple and then you hit enter. Now you can see that only the word text on the first line was replaced with the word apple. Now let's say we want to replace every single instance of text with the word Apple in the entire document. Uh, this is not very practical, so take it for what it is. Um, let's go ahead and get out of here. And let's go up to the very top. And in this case, we're going to use some wildcards. Now type in colon and then the percent sign S again for search forward slash and we're going to do the word text and we want to replace that with apple throughout the whole document and then do another forward slash and g to make it for global and global means the entire document so go ahead and hit enter and you can see that every word in here that was text is now replaced with apple here and up there so um, that's one way to replace words globally. Now, like I said, not very practical. You're not going to always have to do that. Uh, but if you were changing IP addresses, for instance, in a document uh, and it had multiple instances of variables that accepted that IP address and you had to change that, uh, certainly that would come in handy. OK, so let's go look at a bigger document that has a little bit more text in there. So we're going to write and quit our document here. And again, that's colon W. Q all lowercase no spaces and hit enter that saves the document and quits that document and brings you back to your terminal. Now, now that we're in our terminal here, let's just go ahead and ls and I have a document here called Kali.txt and it's just some text that I copied off of the Kali uh, Linux website. So again, we're going to open it up with vi, so vi Kali.txt and hit enter. Now you can see here there's like three smaller paragraphs and I'm going to show you some shortcuts on how to search around a document or move around a document I should say. So the very first thing we want to do here is make sure we're at our first line and I'm going to show you how to move word by word throughout a document. Uh, simply that is the um, letter W and you can see the cursor moving word by word from left to right. Now if we wanted to go back one word we can do the B key, which is back, and that goes word by word back. So let's say I want to go to the very end of a line. And in this paragraph here, what you have to understand about VI is that uh, there is no like word wrap, right? So it's just whatever you type is one paragraph. It's not like individual sentences that you can't, you know what I mean? Like you can't really skip around that way. Um, so it's a little bit of a limitation there, and that's why we have these shortcuts. So let's go to the very end of this line, starting from left to right. And simply, that is the dollar sign, and that brings you, as you can see here by the cursor, to the very end of the document. Now, 
Um, let's say that we want to go back to the beginning of the line. That would be 0. And 0, it's a little confusing, but you'll get used to it. And again, the cheat sheet will be below this video, so download that and make sure you keep a copy for yourself. Now, 0 will bring you very back to the very beginning of that line. So uh, the only way to get to the end of the line it used to be like you can't really arrow down and then go with the back arrow back up because I'm typing my back arrow here. You can probably hear me pounding the keyboard. Uh, it doesn't work that way. You can use the up down arrows to get to you know new paragraphs but um, you can't do it the other way so that's why it's helpful to have the dollar sign and the uh, number zero to go back and forth um, so let's go ahead and talk about going to the top of a document and this is very um, good so if you're editing something at the very bottom and you want to go all the way back to the top to make sure of some configuration or something uh, very simply you do capital H to go to the top. So you saw that our cursor went from the bottom here uh, all the way back up to the top. Now watch, I'll do it again. It's capital H, and now the cursor is at the very beginning of the top of the document. Now let's say you want to go to the middle of the document. That would be capital M for middle, pretty straightforward, right? And uh, let's say we were going to go back to the very top here and we want to go to the very end of the document because we've been in this document before we know the configuration that we're looking to change or edit or whatever is at the very bottom and it's a very long document of course you can always use your page down and page up keys uh, but some smaller apple keyboards and stuff like that don't actually have page up page down keys so what we could do here is um, capital L and that'll bring you to the very end of the actual document itself. So now that said, um, that's pretty much everything you're going to need to know to work with VI. So we went over creating a new document and editing documents. We talked about writing your changes to the documents, whether you created it and or you actually are editing it. And that's the colon W, lowercase w, no spaces. Uh, the colon Q is to quit the actual document. Now, you can't quit a document if you haven't saved its changes. And I'm going to give you a little for instance here. So let's say I want to insert some information here, and I'm just going to type in some words, test, red, tree, or something. doesn't make sense, but <laughs> I'm going to escape to get out of insert mode. And let's say I went to um, colon Q to quit. It's going to give you an error at the bottom. No write since last change. Add a... Um, exclamation point to override that so let's say for instance you didn't mean to make a change you can certainly go ahead and type in colon Q and the exclamation point and it'll actually return the document to before whatever you edited so uh, if you haven't saved it it'll return it to right before you made any changes so in our case if we went to VI Kelly again you can see here that our last lines that we entered in are not there. So let me go ahead and do this again here. And I'm going to go to insert mode. And I'm going to type in test red tree again. And I will escape to get out of the edit mode or the insert mode. And then if I went to write, I could write. And then I can go to quit. And if we VI again, you can see our line is there. So always keep an eye out for that. Uh, and that's a simple way to get out of a document without going, oh no, you know, I made some changes. I'm not sure what I made some changes. I need to start over. It's the, it, unless you saved it, you can do the colon Q and the exclamation point and it'll bring you right back to before you made any changes, like when you first opened the document or the last time you saved changes. Uh, that said, so moving down, we used our arrow keys to go up and down and we talked about the page up and page down keys uh, on most keyboards except for the smaller Apple keyboards. Uh, we talked about moving words back and forward, uh, W for forward, lowercase w, and B for back. Uh, that goes word for word, forward and backwards. We talked about using the money sign or the dollar sign to go to the end of the current line and the zero key to go to the beginning of the line. Uh, we talked about the capital H, M, and L, and down the list there it's capital H to go to the top of the document, capital M to go to the absolute middle of the document, and capital L to go to the lower set of the document. Uh, and then we also talked about setting um, line numbers, which makes it easy for debugging purposes. Again, if you were editing a configuration file or some sort of code, you compiled it and fired it and it says, hey, you got a syntax error on line 27. Uh, simply, you can do colon set number 
um, to enable numbers in there. And then if you wanted to go to that specific number, uh, you can also do the number and the G and uh, no spaces between the number and the G. So for in our case would be line 27 had a syntax error. It would be 27 and G. Uh, then we also talked about finding text in a document and finding multiple instances of that text in a document with the forward slash text and uh, the text defined, of course, in our case was text. And we found the very first instance of that. And then if you back out of that uh, by hitting the enter key or the colon key, I'm sorry, the enter key, you can actually type the end key and then find every instance thereafter, the very first instance. And then we talked about uh, text, finding the text and replacing it, uh, you know, just one, um, one word of text. And then we talked about replacing all of the words of text that matched that regex uh, throughout the entire document using the colon percent s followed by the uh, regex that you want to replace and then the word you want to replace it with and that would replace everything globally throughout the whole entire document uh, based upon that command execution so that pretty much wraps it up for using VI in a very basic sense uh, again it's completely up to you on what you want to use as you are editing documents and things like that uh, for me and, and being a pen tester for a long time VI just tends to save me more time of course it'll be independent based upon your needs yourself so keep that in mind as well and if you're just taking this course by itself thank you for taking the course I do appreciate it uh, you should definitely check out some of our other courses if not a membership uh, memberships also allow you to get all of our courses for one low monthly fee including one-on-one uh, -on -one support directly with me and a bunch of other benefits head on over to the memberships link on the homepage pentesteruniversity.org and check that out for our existing members that got this course for free thank you so much for being a member I do appreciate it and thank you for your continued loyalty and support. I will see you next time.